good morning, everyone, and welcome to um, AARP North Dakota Stretch and Strengthen Yoga Series, number three in the series, Building Better Balance. We're so glad you're with us today. Uh, my name is Marnie Peel. I'm the Communications Director at AARP North Dakota and a longtime uh, yoga practitioner and enthusiast, and I'm just thrilled to have Stephanie Strand from Transitions Yoga with us here today. So if you know anything about AARP North Dakota or AARP in general, you know that we work to improve the lives of people who are 50 and older. And we've done that for over 60 years. We want people to live their best lives and uh, being healthy and being well is really important part of that work. Yoga is a great way to be healthy and well, not just physically, but also um, mentally, spiritually. There's a lot of pieces of yoga that um, are really great for balance, health, wellness, all of those things. They keep your mind and body flexible and fit, and we're all about that. So it's truly an activity that is for everybody. So if you are with us today, and whether you're a longtime yoga person or if you've never done it before, you're going to find a way to participate. So um, we're looking forward to showing you that. And I think you'll really see that Steph can uh, bring motion and movement and good things to every person and everybody. Now, if you've never done this before, please remember to check with your doctor before you begin any new exercise regimen. That's really important. So now without further ado, let's get to yoga. And I'm gonna turn things over to Steph. Steph, take it away and uh, teach us some yoga. Hello everybody, welcome to today's class. We're gonna be doing building better balance. And I know that can mean a, a lot of different things to different people. Um, so before we get started, I just wanna make sure that if you have a mat that you can maybe move up next to a wall, a wall is a great prop to use just in case you need some extra support or having a chair handy or nearby. Um, you can also have your blocks if you wanna use your blocks at all today. Um, I am just going to be laid out here on the mat and I will um, use things as I need it. You can follow along with me or just support yourself however you need to support yourself. So um, as we get started, we're actually going to get um, down onto our mat. So we're going to start on our back today. So as you just like come down onto your mat, just go ahead and let the legs just relax down. Take your arms by your side. You can just roll your shoulders open. Make sure that your head is centered in between your shoulders. And then just start to find a softness in the body. Okay, as you lay on your mat, just notice where you might have any inconsistencies from right to left, top to bottom, side to side. We're gonna take a little time here as you shift or move your body around. Try to slide maybe the shoulder blades underneath the body as you create space across the shoulders. You can close your eyes or just soften your gaze. And as you start to connect with your breath, you wanna relax your belly so you can feel that inhale moving down and out. You can feel the chest rise. And then on the exhale, you're gonna release the chest, release the belly, nice and easy, nice and slow. Start to smooth out your breath. Again, inhale, feel your belly rise, feel your chest rise. And then when you're ready on that exhale, you're gonna feel the chest drop, belly drop. As you start to find balance between your inhale and your exhale, you're also gonna to start to find balance in your body. So again, <clears throat> where are you tight? Where do you have tension, pain, restriction? If your low back is really bothering you this morning, feel free to bend your knees and that just kind of takes it out of the equation. With each exhale, see if you can drop onto your mat just a little bit more, find more weight, a heaviness as you ground down. And as we move through today's practice, just be mindful of how your body is showing up on the mat this morning. Okay, move with awareness. That is the first step to building better balance is really knowing where your body is in space how your legs and your arms can add to that. So in this moment right now, how are you doing physically, mentally, emotionally? Where is your thoughts at? Where is your mind at? How are you feeling? And then can you let go or release any of that? Set it aside for now and just really focus 
on your body, whatever happens physically in your body, we can translate that to other aspects of our of ourselves. And as you find softness here, maybe you want to connect to an intention or a dedication for your practice to maintain focus, to keep you present. This could be a mantra, an affirmation, a prayer, whatever you connect with, whatever resonates with you. And just start to move yourself into this more positive space. And when you found that, we're going to take those arms and then stretch them all the way back up and over our head, lengthen out through the arms, lengthen out through the legs. And then on your exhale, we're just going to set those arms down by our side, bend up one knee and then the other, we're going to plant our feet. You're going to notice a little shifting in the pelvis. And then I just want you to notice that little space you have there at your low back. And what we're going to do is we're going to increase that space. So we're just going to tilt our pelvis as we relax our belly. And then from here, we're going to flatten out our back, engage our belly, and then just connect more with the mat. You're going to do this back and forth. So it's just going to arch your low back, roll your pelvis, and then you're going to flatten your back, engage your belly. And as you do this back and forth, try to remain relaxed in the feet. So try not to press into the feet to do this movement and try to keep everything in the torso. And this is just a way for us to connect with our core and our back, which is one of the main muscle groups that we use for balance postures. It's a very subtle movement. And as you rotate the hips in this way, you should also notice that your head is moving the same way your hips are moving. Go ahead and just make sure you're breathing. You don't have to breathe in a certain way, just as long as you keep the breath moving. You know, we're going to add to this. The next time you flatten out your back, you're going to draw your right knee into your chest. And then when you lengthen or arch your low back, you're going to send that leg long, take it all the way down to the floor. And then I want you to bring your right arm back behind you and then just stretch out your whole right side. Okay, now you're gonna come up and across the diagonal. Right arm is gonna reach for that left knee and then we're gonna take it across the body, find a twist, and then extend your left arm out to the side. Try to keep your shoulders grounded on the mat as you do this. Come over just as far as you can and then keeping that knee bent is gonna help with your twist. If you wanna add a little bit more here, you can extend the leg out but you don't have to. Good, as you roll back to center, you're gonna give that knee a nice squeeze, pull it into your chest. And then you're just gonna let that left foot come down to the floor, keep your knee bent. Take your hands back down by your side and then start to lift your right leg straight up towards the ceiling. Pull it back as far as you can, again, without pushing into your left foot. And then slowly lower it down. We're gonna give a little heel tap on the mat. Okay, notice the direction of your foot as you lift it up. Try to keep it in a straight line, lower back down. And then again, inhale, take it all the way up. We're gonna grab a hold of that leg with the same arm as leg, so right arm, and then just slowly start to bring that leg out to the side. Try not to shift your left hip at all. Keep that hip grounded into the mat, keep your foot planted, and then just take it out as far as you can while still allowing that to stay stable. If you wanna place your hand there, just so you know what your hip is doing, go ahead. And then we're gonna slowly bring that leg all the way back up. From here, grab a hold of your leg with both hands, walk up the back of the leg, and then bring your nose to your knee, just curl up and in. Okay, we're gonna bend that knee, set it back down on the floor, lower the head, hands by your side, and then take it back into that same arch and flatten that we did at the beginning. Again, letting your head go with the movement, keeping the shoulders soft and relaxed. Again, just taking ourselves back into that neutral space. And staying light in the feet. The next time you flatten your back, you're gonna draw your left knee into your chest. 
And then as you lengthen and arch, that leg comes all the way down to the floor. And then your left arm is going to go back behind you. So you're going to stretch out again that whole left side. Reach it as long as you possibly can. And then you're going to come up and across the diagonal. Grab your right knee, pull it across the body, and then extend your right arm out from your shoulder just to keep that shoulder grounded. Okay, keep your belly soft here as you breathe. Notice where your knee is in relation to your hip, if it's above the hip in the same line or slightly below. That's also going to change how you feel that stretch along that hip line. Connecting with our hips is also super important when we're working with balance because for most of us, when we're standing, that is our center of gravity. This definitely depends on how long your legs are or your torso, but for the most part, that is where it is somewhere around our pelvis. So as you come back to center, you're gonna give that right knee a nice big squeeze, hug it in, and then set your right foot down on the floor. Okay, hands are gonna lower by your side too. You can use them if you need them, but we're gonna lift that left leg straight up towards the ceiling, drawing the toes back towards the head, keep your right foot soft. And then we're gonna lower back down, give a little heel tap, and then bring it all the way back up. Then again, lower down. Keep your foot in line with your hip. And we'll do one more of the lower down. As we come up with that leg, now we're gonna grab a hold of it, walk the hands up the leg, draw up and a nose to knee, find a little curl. And then lower the head, bend your knee, lower the leg. Hands down by your side. We're gonna do this one more time, arch and flatten here. And then from your arch and flatten, we're basically taking that full range of motion. How much can we move the hips one way and then the other? In this space, I want you to find neutral hips. So start to find a middle ground. From that neutral, now you're going to push into your feet and then lift your hips up towards the ceiling, find your bridge pose. Notice what your hips are doing as you do this. We're going to create a little flow. So we're going to lower down hips to the floor. And then on your breath, if you want to, inhale, lift it up. So push into both feet at the same time. Exhale to lower. And notice if your hip bones are rising together or if you have a little wobbliness happening. And then see if you can just direct the hips straight up, the knees forward, and then slowly connect back down to the mat. Okay, so just keep this going a few more times, focusing on what your hips are doing, trying to keep your shoulders soft not bringing them up by your ears, and then hands down by your side for control. On that last one, we're going to lower down. Knees are going to hug into our chest, give them a nice big squeeze, and then we're just going to roll side to side. We're going to massage our hips, massage our spine, our shoulders. Okay, and then just a nice easy way to get out of this is we're going to roll over to one side, find that fetal position, and then press yourself all the way up. As you come up, we're going to come around into an easy seat. Your legs can be crossed or long, whatever works for you, but settle your sit bones down onto the floor. Start to bring your shoulders over your hips and then find some weight moving down into the legs. If you need to open the legs, open the legs. We're going to take those hands down by our side and then on your inhale, you're going to stretch them all the way up towards the ceiling. Okay, palms are going to separate just a little bit and then imagine you're holding a ball between your arms or a block between your arms. And we're just going to take a nice long side stretch to the right, nice and easy. Keep both sides of the body balanced, both sides of the body long. And then we're going to lift it up to center and take it over to the left. This is a really challenging pose if you're weak in any of those side muscles. So just kind of focus on keeping the arms long. And then on this right side, when we go back, we're going to take and drop the right arm down. Left arm is going to extend a little bit more. And then see if you can start to bend your right elbow sink in. As we create length in the sides of the body, it's going to be very important for maintaining our spinal length as well. So take it all the way up again. Palms form around that imaginary ball or block. Take it over to the left. And then release your left hand down. Take your right arm up and overhead. You can start to bend your left elbow. Okay, slowly rise all the way back up and then release those hands down to the mat behind you. Take your feet, bring them out in front of you and you can step your feet about as wide as your mat as your knees are bent. Resting back on your hands, we're just gonna drop the knees side to side. Take a nice, easy, gentle twist. 
So as we continue to warm up the body, I just really want you to focus on what your body is doing in any given moment. Again, try to be really aware of where you are on the mat, where your arms and your legs are. And it sounds easy, but sometimes we forget what we're doing. So now roll your knees over to one side, doesn't matter which side, hug your heels in, and we're gonna turn and sit our flip ourselves all the way up and around into our tabletop position. From your tabletop position, work on getting your hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips, and then you can untuck your toes, push your hips back towards your heels and find your child's pose. From your child's pose, can inhale, take it all the way back up. And then we're gonna tuck our toes under this time and then push our hips back again as we stretch out our feet and our toes. When inhale, take it up. Okay, untuck your toes, push your hips back, child's pose. And then inhale up again, tuck your toes, push your hips back towards your heels. We're just stretching and opening up the feet, which are really important when we come to standing poses. One more time, untuck your toes, send your hips back. And then as you come forward, you're just going to stack into that tabletop. I want you to take a big squeeze here around your back, hug your navel in towards your spine. Notice what that feels like in your cat pose. And then you're going to relax your belly, engage your low back, and look forward. This is exactly what we were doing when we were on our back, that arch and flatten. Okay. And then this time, I want you to find neutral. Extend your right leg back behind you. Tuck your toes under and then push out through the heel. Okay, as you direct that energy back, we're just lengthening our calf muscle. And then in this space, you're going to soften that leg, keep it long, and then round your back, hug up and in, and navel to spine, just like you did in your cat pose. You know, as you lengthen the spine, you're going to float that right leg up, lift it about hip height, doesn't have to go higher than that. And then slowly set the leg down. As we've felt into that now, extend your left arm out in front of you. So you have a long arm, long leg. Both are on the floor. And then together, we're going to inhale, lift the arm, lift the leg. See how that feels. If the arm is too much, just do the leg. Okay, now slowly lower down again, long arm, long leg. And then one more time, we're going to lift it up, engage the back line of the body. Try to keep your spine long. Okay, now this time I want you to keep your arm long, set the leg down, and then roll your arm open, left arm, so you come into a twist. All right, from your twist, we're gonna bring that arm back forward. See if you can lift the leg again, push down into your bottom arm and leg, go slow. And then we're gonna see if we can squeeze knee to elbow round your back, hug it up and in. Good, inhale to lengthen. And then one more time, exhale, squeeze it under. Now from here, I want you to see if you can grab your knee and then just draw it up and into your chest. Keep pushing the floor away around your back. And then keeping your knee where it is, set your arm down and then pop your leg up between your hands. So as we come up with that leg, we're in a low lunge here. Arms come up towards the ceiling. Bring your palms together and then exhale, cross over, find your twist. If the elbow doesn't quite make it to the thigh, you can stay high in your twist. You don't have to come all the way down. When you make that connection, you can use the leg as a little bit of a leverage to draw the hands closer to the heart. And from here, you're going to slide the hands down, take them onto the inside of that right leg, and then sweep the leg back behind you. From here, we're going to go to the other side. So from our tabletop position, extend your left foot back behind you this time. You can push out through the heel, get nice and long. Find that stretch first, and then soften, curl up and in, a little bit of a cat pose here. As you lengthen the spine, you're gonna float the leg up, engage that left glute to lift the leg, and then slowly lower it down. As you lower it down now, extend your opposite arm out in front, and then see if you can lift the arm and the leg at the same time, working on finding balance in this pose. Okay, exhale, you're gonna lower. Again, if you don't wanna do the arm, you don't have to, but we're gonna lift it up, lengthen. Okay, and then drop it down. We're gonna do one more. Lift the arm, lift the leg. And then this time, see if you can keep the arm lifted as you lower the leg down, and then roll open into your twist. Okay, keep that back leg long. And then as you come forward again, you're gonna float the leg up and then see if you can squeeze knee to elbow round under. 
Inhale, find the bend. And then exhale, bring it back together. Because you can grab the knee just to help you. If that takes away from your balance, don't do it. But we're going to drop the hand down and then put that foot up between our hands. Again, as we rise into the slow lunge, palms reaching for the ceiling. And then take your hands down to your heart. Find your twist. The more you keep your joints stacked, my knee over my ankle, my back hip somewhat over the ankle or over the knee, the easier it is to balance versus when we start to extend the joints or the arms out and away from the body. Okay, from here, we're gonna slide the hands down towards the floor. Pull that leg back behind you. So we're back in our tabletop again. And then from our tabletop, we're gonna tuck our toes under Float the knees off the floor and then lift our hips up nice and high. Find your down dog. Okay, find any movement that you need to settle into your down dog. So maybe you need to walk your feet out a little wider, turn the position of the hands in or out, whatever feels good in your shoulders. And then just settle in, hips high, head drops between the arms. Okay, from here, we're going to slowly roll it forward. Engaging your belly slowly, set those knees down gently on the mat. And then we're going to take that right knee again and pull our right knee into our chest. From here, draw that right leg straight out to the side. And then look back and make sure that your foot and your knee are in the same line. See if you can center your weight over your left arm, left leg. And then slowly kick that right leg back behind you as you lift your right arm up towards the ceiling. I'm going to switch to the other side. Okay, so as you do this, you're finding balance here. And if you want to take your bottom foot and then just take it back, you can have more of a kickstand in that bottom leg, which will help you here so you don't roll back off your mat. Now take the leg down, take the arm forward, and then lift your hips up as high as you can. Get that nice, wonderful side stretch here. We're going to use this as our starting position for the next one. And we're going to take very slowly and move our arm towards our knee. Give it a nice little squeeze. And then lengthen it all the way back. Good, again, going slow. Knee to elbow, come across the front of the body. And then lengthen it back. One more time, give it a nice big squeeze here. And then you're gonna roll everything down and around, come back into your tabletop. Give your hips a little side to side. If your wrists are bothering you at all, feel free to come down onto your elbows, maybe roll out your wrists. And then wherever you are, we're gonna pop ourselves up and go to the other side. So from this other side again, we're just gonna take and squeeze now our left knee up and into our chest. And then as you lift it out to the side, you're going to, again, center your weight now over your right side. So this left leg is in line with your hip. And then you're going to kick it back and lift your left arm up towards the ceiling. So coming into this modified side plank. Again, if you need to kick down your foot, do that. <laughs> it's a lot happening in your glutes here, in your hip. And then you're going to set the leg down and bring your arm up and overhead. So you're going to have this wonderful arch. So we are opening the left side of the body this time. And from here, we're gonna squeeze, knee to elbow, come across the front, nice and slow. Okay, lengthen it all the way back up, big stretch. And then exhale, squeeze it in. Go ahead and take it, open it up. And then exhale, squeeze. From this squeezed position now, just take and turn everything back into your tabletop. Knees drop, hands drop. Can maybe give your hips a little side to side. All we're gonna do here is look towards the top of the mat, and then step our feet up one at a time, coming into our forward fold. I'm gonna stay sideways here so you can kind of see what we're gonna do. But from this forward fold, I want you to look down at your feet and get your feet out a little wider, especially if you're feeling wobbly already. Okay, press down into your feet and then lift your hands up to your shins, come into your half lift. Head is going forward, hips are pulling back. On your exhale, you're going to bend your knees. Let your forearms come to your thighs. Bring your palms together. Push your hips back. So you're just thinking into what would be like a chair pose. And then we're going to bring the hands up nice and strong to the heart. Lift and rise chair. Relax the shoulders down away from the ears. Notice where the weight is in your feet. 
And then from here, just reach and rise, take it all the way up towards the ceiling. And then let those arms fall down by your side. As you hang out in Tadasana Mountain Pose, again, I want you to shift front to back. So rock into the heels, rock into the toes. If you're feeling wobbly, find your wall or your chair. <clears throat> and then take it side to side. So you're doing front to back and then you're now doing side to side. Settle into the center of the foot. So find the middle of your foot. And then once you've found it, lift your head up. So it's almost like you're gazing forward. And then see if you can close your eyes and feel those minor movements in the body, those small little movements. If you don't feel comfortable, open your eyes. But what these small movements do are these like these little stabilizer muscles that we're going to work with when we do our balancing poses. And the more we work with those stabilizing muscles, the less likely we are to get injured if we were to fall or roll an ankle or do something crazy like that, where they help to stabilize our joints. So when you're ready, we're going to take open our eyes, lift those arms, bring them all the way up and overhead. Palms are gonna to come together. You're gonna to take your hands, bring them into your heart, shift your hips back like you're coming into that chair again, but we're gonna drop our forearms to our thighs, straighten out the legs, bring your hands to your shin, and then exhale, lower all the way down, forward fold. Okay, we're gonna reverse back up, same way, hands to shins, half lift. Bend your knees, forearms to thighs, palms together. Can inhale, hands to heart, rise into your chair. And then with your next inhale, we're going to bring it all the way up, extending maybe a little back bend here, and then softly bring the arms down by your side. Good. We're going to do that one more time. Inhale, arms come all the way up, big reach. Exhale, sink into your chair, hips pull back. Hands lower to your thighs, palms together. And then when you're ready, straighten out the legs, hands to shins, flat back. Exhale, it's going to drop you down into your forward fold. This time from your forward fold, just take a little sway side to side. And find that weight coming down into the head, moving through the spine, and lifting up and off the hips. And then from here, push your hips back, bend your knees, slowly bring it all the way up. Let's do a nice big roll, find your Tadasana. From your Tadasana, we're going to shift our weight over into our right leg. Take your left foot, bring it across the body. So you're gonna take and connect over. So your legs are crisscrossed. Hands are gonna to come to your hips. Okay, now from here, if you're already feeling wobbly, saddle up next to a wall so there's a wall behind you or that you have a chair next to you because you can use the chair as you come down. And I'll just kind of show you how you can do that if you have one. Okay, but really what we're working on again is balance moving slow. So you can use a chair or not. We're just gonna slowly start to push the hips back through these twisted legs, pushing into your feet, and then lower the crown of the head down. Stop when you start to feel wobbly or unbalanced. And then we're gonna slowly rise all the way back up. Okay, now from here, take that same left leg and step it in front of your right toes. So it's toe to heel. And then you're gonna shift your weight slightly forward so that you're balancing your weight front to back. Okay, hands can come off the hips, extend out nice and wide from the shoulders. And then if you want to make this a little easier, step your left foot more in front of your right. So again, it's like you're on a balance beam for gymnastics. We're gonna take those arms and we're gonna circle around to the right first. Arms stay wide, we're gonna go slow. Okay, turn it around as much as you can until you feel your stopping point. And then you're gonna come around back to center and then all the way over to the left. It seems easy, but it's very hard. <laughs> you know, when you come back to center, you're gonna keep those arms extended if that feels okay in the shoulders. Lengthen that left leg out to the side, maybe take your hand to your chair or bring them into your heart. And then we're gonna lift the leg up, find your balancing star. You can flex a foot that helps to engage those side muscles, those leg muscles. Focus on something here that's not moving. I hope you have something in your room or your space. And this is considered a drishti in yoga. A fixed point helps to clear your mind and let you drop in. 
Now, when we come out of this, we're going to bring the legs together or apart. Take your hips, sink them back, bring your hands to your heart, chair pose. Okay, just relax the shoulders. Drop down and in, forward fold. Widen the feet if you need to, and then just take a little side to side. What's always important to focus on balance each and every day. The more you do, the better you get at it, just like anything else. Okay, now sink your hips back as you bend your knees, roll it on up nice and slow. You can take your hands to your hips here. And then we're gonna step our right leg over our left and then push both feet down into the floor, try to keep your legs long. I'm gonna do this one without a chair. So we're just gonna keep our hands on our hips, draw the hips back, and then slowly drop down into that forward fold, lead with your head, lead with your heart, and only come down into that point where you start to get a little wobbly. Okay, when you push into your feet, you're gonna slowly roll it all the way back up. Nice and easy. And then when you get to the top, step that right foot in front of the left or more in front of the left if you want it to be a little easier. Okay, and then center the weight in between both feet. Very important where your feet are. <laughs> okay, draw those arms out nice and wide from the shoulders. This time we're going to go to the left first. So we're going to take a slow rotation over to the left. You can be using your wall or the chair. And then as you unravel, we're going to come back through center and then all the way over to the right. All right, if you fall out, just get back in. When we're coming back to center, you can leave your arms extended or if your shoulders are getting tired, bring your hands into your heart or to your hip. Kick that right leg out to the side this time. And then we're going to just center our weight over our left leg. And then see if we can lift our right leg off the floor, flex the foot, and then reach out through the fingertips, balancing star pose. If you're wobbly, if you're kind of shaky, that's good. You're working those muscles that need to be worked, those smaller, minor muscles, as well as your larger muscles that sometimes take over a lot of the time. Okay, now as we come out of this, we're going to bring our feet together or keep them separated. Bend your knees, sink your hips back, hands to heart, chair pose. Okay, just kind of wiggle back in the center, feel down into your feet, and then slowly release into your forward fold. Take and just sway it out side to side. Okay, last little bit here. And then you're going to inhale to your half lift. From your half lift, again, bend your knees. Take your forearms to your thighs, palms together. <clears throat> lift up and into your chair. And then extend those arms all the way up towards the ceiling. We're going to grab our right wrist here. Take ourselves up and over to the left. Big side stretch. Notice where the weight is. And see if you can start to bring your weight over into your right leg. Okay, now as we come up to center, we're going to do the opposite. Grab your left wrist. Take it up and overhead, shift some of your weight down into your left foot. Okay, just kind of counterbalancing the pose. And then inhale, arm stretch all the way up. Maybe a little back bend is available. Take your hands down to your heart, sink into your chair, forearms to your thighs, and then straighten the legs. Find your half lift. On that last one, exhale, release it all the way down, hands to the mat. Step your feet back one at a time, lower down to your knees. If you have something under your knees, great. And then we're just gonna take the knees out a little wider, push our hips back, find our child's pose. You can rest on your forearms so that you're not dropping all the way down to the floor, or you can use your block so that you're up a little higher. If you have bad knees, just don't take yourself all the way back. Maybe just stay a little higher. Okay, take a few breaths here. Breathe in and out. Reconnect to the ground, to the floor. So you're just coming back into a place of stability. Okay. From here, start to bring your arms forward. Bring your knees back together. And then drop your hips over to one side. Doesn't matter which direction. And we're going to flip our legs around to the front. As you come to the front, you're going to keep your knees bent, grab a hold of your shins, lift yourself up into a nice tall seat, draw the shoulders back and down, and then keeping that tall spine, you're just going to straighten out the arms, find your boat pose. Again, working on that core, that's very important for supporting our balance. Start to bring yourself back up, bend your elbows, and then draw the elbows 
Again, nice and straight. One more time, bend your elbows. And then draw them back nice and straight. Now from here, what I want you to do is take your arm over towards your right leg. See if you can pull your right foot off the floor. So just take it into a single leg boat here. And then as you come up, you're gonna lengthen that right leg all the way out in front of you. Let the left knee just drop out to the side. If you want, you can bring the foot in to connect with your thigh. And then just keep sliding forward gently over the leg. You're just basically letting your body fall over the top of that long leg. As you come up, you're going to scoop underneath that right knee, bring it out to the side, and then join the feet together for butterfly pose. For your butterfly, you don't have to have the feet in very close to the body, but we're going to reach the arms out in front of us, however far you can go out in front of you. The feet are going to naturally push together. And then again, we're going to lift up, slide the hands out to the knees, and then come back into this like butterfly boat. <laughs> okay, take it forward. Again, reach those arms out as far as you can. Find that stretch through the back line of the body. And then slide up, grab a hold of the knees if you want or not, and then find your butterfly boat. Good, bring the knees together, walk the feet out so that everything is in line with your hips. Draw yourself up into that nice tall position and then draw the elbows straight. So we're coming back into our regular boat, but now we're gonna take our hands to our left knee, pick your left knee up as you take the foot off the floor. It's a single leg boat. And then reaching out with that foot, we're going to set it down in front of us. Let this knee drop out to the side, maybe connect to the inner thigh, and then pull forward. Nice and easy. As you're holding this pose, reconnect with your breath. Where is your inhale? Where is your exhale? Can you line them up with one another so it's an equal breath in and out? And then as you come up, you're going to hook underneath the knee, bring it back into that butterfly. But this time, can I set your butterfly out a little wider? Grab a hold of your ankles and just flap your butterfly wings. This helps to relax your hips. Let go of any tension you're holding on to. Okay, from here, we're going to draw those knees together. Scoot up towards the top of the mat, so wherever you are. And then hug your knees into your chest, roll it on back, or drop to one side, and then come back. Knees to chest, roll it out side to side. Okay, start to relax your shoulders, check in with your low back. And then from here, set your feet down on the floor. Oh, forgot about something. We'll have to do it on the side. <laughs> okay, so from here, bring your left knee into your chest. I'm going to reconnect to something from the first or the beginning of the class. Extend your left leg all the way up. Reach up as high as you can with your left arm. Just make yourself nice and even. And then start to draw that left leg out to the side. Oh, almost forgot about that. Long leg and keep that right hip down on the floor. And then this time, you're just gonna bend your left knee Grab a hold of the foot. So you're in a half happy baby, half dead bug. If the foot isn't available, you can take it by the ankle or behind the knee, but you're essentially trying to bring the knee down along the side of the body and keep the foot lifted. This is just gonna stretch out the back hamstrings, which are also very important for balance. And most of us are very tight in our hamstring muscles. Okay, from here, we're gonna make that connection left foot to our right thigh. And then we're going to extend the arms out and away from the legs. Roll your hips to the right. Okay, come back to center. And then one more time to the right. Find your twist. If this twist does not feel good in your body, simply stack the knees one on top of the other. Or if you can, keep it as it is. Open up across the chest. Relax the arms.
you know, squeeze the legs together, bring them back to center, uncross. Okay, we're gonna draw our right knee in, but instead of doing the long leg thing, we're just gonna come into that half, happy baby, half dead bug right away. So you're gonna take the foot above the knee, grab the foot ankle or behind the knee, whatever works for you. And then think of opening up this inner thigh. Again, taking out or stretching your hamstring, taking tension out of your hamstring. When slowly start to make that connection, right foot to left thigh, roll your hips to the left, just kind of notice how that feels. Squeeze your legs, come back to center, and then do it one more time. Drop your legs over to the left, settle in where you feel comfortable, open up the arms, drop down through the shoulders, relax your face, relax your jaw. Start to get comfortable on the floor. And now you're going to squeeze your legs together, bring them back to center. And from here, uncross your legs, set the feet down on the mat, and then pressing into your feet, just lift your hips up enough to relax your low back, maybe give your hips a little wiggle side to side, and then set them back down. As you extend your legs out long here, notice how your low back feels. If it feels like it's still pulling a lot, then take and bend your knees and we'll just rest here. So as we start to move into this, just like small little short savasana, you're just going to reconnect with your body physically, mentally, emotionally. Very important to take this time as you check in. How are you doing it now than you were at the beginning of practice? Okay, relax the legs. Let the feet just flop out to the side. Maybe again, slide those shoulder blades under the body. Lengthen out through the neck from shoulders to ears. Create space, create room. Soften down into your fingertips. Connect with your breath. Take a slow inhale as you breathe down into your belly. Feel it rise. Feel your chest rise. And then exhale. Release through the chest. Release through the belly. Do this a few more times. Try to inhale as deeply as you can. Take your time. And then slow, long exhale. All right, keep that going at your own pace. And close your eyes for a moment. Come back to your intention, your dedication. What did you set at the beginning of the practice that will help you move into the rest of your day filled with peace, with gratitude, with love for yourself, for others? When you're ready, take those arms, stretch them all the way back behind you, lengthen. Big inhale, and then exhale, hands just come one on top of the other at heart center. And from mine to yours, I thank you for joining me this morning. Namaste, everybody. Mm -hmm.